Hello there and welcome to Shuttle Bay 4. This time we discuss the classic TOS episode, Spock's Brain, often referred to as one of the worst episodes of Star Trek ever. Plus, we are joined from a hospital bedside with some rather fantastic news. Although I am going to oh, yeah. date if you start singing, mate, you're gone. Okay, just <laughs> lady in red. No, it's dancing, dancing with, with me. me. Damn, She's seriously, bitchy. don't encourage him. Nobody's you. here, just me and Steve. <laughs> 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 You redeemed yourself slightly by adding me into the song. So Spock's brain. I think it's important when we think about this episode to think about the state that Star Trek was in. So we'd had two se seasons of Star Trek, which hadn't actually been that big a success. And the show had been cancelled. And then after a letter writing campaign it had been brought back. But it feels like the production, not the production company, but the studio behind it weren't particularly interested in it succeeding. Whether it's because I felt bullied into bringing it back, I don't know. Um, I think there were a lot of arguments in the background as well with Gene Roddenberry and people like that. So it was being bounced around the the schedule. So I think it was on quite late at night. Yeah. I think it, it lost a lot of audience that way. And it just wasn't really a lot of love given to it. And season three is quite renowned for some really poor episodes. And Spock's brain is definitely one of those. So I'll kick off my notes, and as always, it's all in chronological order. So yeah, Spock's yeah. brain. My first note is, when it starts, you see an amazing piece of apparatus on um, Sulu's console. And it looked amazing. I can imagine at the time, people would have seen that. I thought, oh, that looks really cool. It's like this little like, articulated, motorized gadget thing he's got. And then the next observation I've got is Spock's ears. Spock's ears are definitely different in this episode. They look bigger, they're kind of more pointy. They're just they're definitely different to how they have been in the past. They really did look different in this episode. When that intruder appears on the bridge and she presses buttons on like that gauntlet thing she's wearing to make people pass oh. out. <laughs> that, that's the exact observation I'm gonna make. It makes a comedy noise. Oh. So, <laughs> boom! So there's no drama behind it. It's not if it went like it might be like, oh, everyone's collapsed. But because it's grown, bong! It just sounds like something from, do you remember Rent a Ghost? Yes, it, it's a very, <laughs> it just... definitely 70s, 60s type of um, <laughs> sound effect. It is, it's just a comedy sound effect. You just can't take it seriously. Um, and then, not long after that, we've got one of the best, worst lines ever in Star Trek. And you know the line I'm going to say. Spock is laying in intensive care and Kirk is basically interrogating McCoy. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with him is his intensive care, you know? Uh, and he says something like, oh, enough with the mystery. Just tell me what's wrong. Come on, Bones, what's the mystery? And he says to him, he's worse than dead, Jim. His brain's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just one of those lines that's so ridiculous. You can't help but laugh. He was worse than dead. His brain is gone. And again, it's meant to have gravitas. It's meant to have drama. This is Spock and his brain's gone. But you can't help but just laugh. Even Kirk, right? If you watch that scene, it looks like Captain Kirk's basically thinking, what the fuck are you on about? It's just got this weird expression on his face. And DeForest Kelly, bless him, it does feel like this episode, he is battling with one of the worst scripts he's probably ever had to deal with. His brain is gone. Because he's got these lines that are meant to be delivered with such drama right but they just come across as ridiculous his brain has gone it's just a brilliant example of that in fact whenever you hear a reference to brain in this episode it's almost always hilarious even though it's not meant to be oh yeah and kirk at this point as well because mccoy is basically saying like his brain's gone you know i'm i might be a great surgeon but i can't put a vulcan brain back in a vulcan body you know what i mean it's, it's beyond me and kirk turns around and says well if it was taken out, they could be put back in. <laughs> it's just it's just really reductive, really oversimplistic. Well, it can be put back in. It was taken out. It can be put back in. Um, it's almost like that, um, that life support joke where he says, have you switched it off and switched it back on again? It's that <laughs> yeah. sort of 
you can't take this episode seriously at all. Um, there are some shots as well in this episode that just seem quite badly framed because Star Trek is normally shot brilliantly, particularly the original series. And there are some s- scenes that look like there'd be great posters on a wall, especially with those coloured backgrounds and everything. But there's some shots of the bridge that are just framed really odd. Uh, I will say, though, that um, you do get shots of the bridge that I don't think... I was going to say, I don't think we've ever seen before. We might have done. It's just that we've never seen them so long. So you've got, a, like, imagine the camera behind Kirk's chair and pointing forward towards the view screen. And you don't normally get that view. Normally mm, you see yeah, from yeah. that, that yeah. direction, you know. But um, So it was nice to see that view, even though I think some of the shots were weirdly framed. That 24-hour countdown as well, it's just contrived. I mean, the, the phrase I'm going to use most often during this review of this episode is, it makes no sense. Because it makes no sense. McCoy doesn't know that it's got precisely 24 hours. It's not like when the when the when it counts down. Because at some points, like Kirk's like, "Oh, we've got five hours and eight minutes left." No, 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 no. You haven't got bang on 24 hours. When it reaches zero, you're not going to hear a dee 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 dee, and Spock's just going to go. Mm. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, I can understand it. Said, "Look, we've got roughly 24 hours," but it did play it too literally. This 24 hours thing. Shatner's hair looks really shit and there's a particular scene where his hair just looks really bad i don't know what they did with his wig maybe they washed it or something and it just looks really strange um when they land on that planet okay so they land on this on this alien planet where you've got the women living kind of below the surface and the men living above the surface and the the men are referred to as being savages and really big so you're expecting them to be giants. Humanoid, all right, on the large side. And there's even, one of them even refers to, I think, Kirk or one of the landing parties being small. You are small. So yeah, it really man. sets up the fact that these aliens are really big and our human, you know, whatever, are really small. And then one, one of them stands up next to Kirk when they have a bit of a tussle. They're basically the same size. So that just, again, it made no sense. The remote control on Spock is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous right but here's the thing when spot was in sick bay on life support and kirk basically turns around and says well when we go and try and find spock's brain we need to take spot with us that game makes no sense surely the best place for him is on that life support machine right but if that thing that remote control thing that they stick on spock's head can do what the life support machine can do then why put him in life support anyway? Why not just stick one of them on his head? It just uh, uh, makes no sense. And at one stage, McCoy presses a button. He presses one red button for Spock to turn round to Kirk. And I'm like, how did you program that red button so he just turns slightly to one side in the hope that you would have a situation where he needs to turn at that particular... Honestly, it just, it just really wound me up. That remote control thing is just ridiculous. We were talking about those comedy sound effects where she presses those buttons, boom, and they all collapse. I don't know if anyone noticed, but there's a scene where they get trapped in a cave and the doors close. When that door closes, it sounded just like the sound effect uh, during the opening sequence of Button Moon. <laughs> I don't know if any of you remember Button Moon yeah, TV I, series. I, I, I can hear it now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That noise. We're off to Button Moon. Honestly, it sounded just like it. To the point where I even paused it, ran into the kitchen and said to my missus, you've got to come and listen to this, right? It sounds just like the sound effect from Button Moon. Um, all the women are dressed like Barbarella. Um, one thing I did like about it, so there were maybe one or two good things in this episode. When Spock hears Kirk's voice, this is like the computer Spock that's controlling the, the base or whatever. He says that he felt pleasure listening to Kirk's voice. Um, I've made that sound more creepy than it is. But it was nice <laughs> to um, emphasise the fact that Spock likes Kirk. You know, there's a fondness there. You know, they are friends. There's quite a bit of classic Star Trek sexism in this. Like when they're referring... Oh, look- Massively, massively. <laughs> when they're, well, when they're referring to the women on the planet, and they're like, I certainly noticed the uh, delightful aspects, and they're just, they're just some of the comments are quite funny. I'm sure you noticed the delight aspect of this place. Yes, I certainly did notice those delightful aspects. Um, we do get a bit Kirk Fu as well. We get a double punch and a flying kick. <laughs> How does Spock go to the woman and fight her? Oh, yeah, that's it. So there's a scene where Spock goes up to a woman and kind of wrestles her to get something off her. 
how does McCoy do that using the remote control? <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of I mean, how does he do it? It's not like he's got a game controller where he's, you know, playing Mortal Kombat or something like that. It's established that women can restore Spock's brain after putting that helmet on. Um, and that helmet, which, by the way, is l- very conveniently located right next to the woman. It's not like, oh, well, if you go down there, there's a room where we've got this helmet. It's like, oh, it's, it's there right next to me. Yeah, it'll give him th- the knowledge lasts for three hours. And McCoy says, oh, that's just enough time. That'll be just enough time. And like, how does he know it's going to take three hours? Unless he's referring to that 24-hour countdown. They've only got three hours left. Right, I still do not understand why the aliens refer to the controller and talk about them not being able to cope without, you know, the controller, which is Spock, when they've only had him for, like, a few hours. <laughs> See, I saw it as really as a sexist, you know, the women can't, deal, can't cope without a man controlling them. I thought... This is so 60s. It's that, fantastic. That is true, actually. Yeah, that is true. But, but you but, said yeah. how, they, how they can't cope yeah. without him. I wonder if that's because the previous controller died, like that, that brain right, yes. died. That's and what then, I was thinking. Uh, then they've got the new one, which yeah. the old controller sent her to get the new one. Yeah. And then the new one will carry on the lineage. Yeah, I must admit, I did think that maybe one died and quickly brought another one in. Um, Kirk, yeah. actually, you're on about, you know, these people can't cope on their own because uh, they explain the fact that the controller deals with, like, uh, I think, like the air filtration system, their water purification system, everything. And Kirk basically just casually turns around and says, ah, you don't need a controller. You'll figure, figure it all out. You're all out. <laughs> <laughs> Which made me laugh, although we did offer to stay behind and help or something like that. <laughs> when uh, McCoy is operating on Spock and uh, Spock basically says, oh, well, if you sort me vocal cords out first, I'll be able to talk you through the operation, which is just, it's just bonkers. And then you end up with this weird scene where you've got McCoy operating on Spock, literally the top of his head, presumably is off, you can't see it. And he's putting his brain in while Spock's talking him through it because just is plugged in his vocal cords effectively. It's just, oh my God, it's just crazy. If you will finish reconnecting my speech center, I might be able to help. Oh yeah, the good stuff. So I've got two um, positive things to say about this episode, which is Kirk says that controlling the men with pain isn't good, you know, because they control the, you know, the men that live on top with pain. And there's kind of a message about working together, you know, rather than um, you controlling them via pain. It'd be better if you all just work together and become, you know, a single society. And I thought that was quite nice. That was quite Star Trekky. And there is a, quite a funny joke in it as well, where I think McCoy says, I should, I should never have connected his mouth or something like that. I should have never reconnected his mouth. And I yeah. thought that was, you know, I was a, a classic comedy McCoy line. This is one of those episodes where it is so bad it's good. It's not one of those really crap episodes that you that you skip. If I was doing a complete Trek rewatch, and I was being quite selective, I would still watch this episode because uh, although it's ridiculous, I do think it's quite enjoyable because it's that ridiculous. It's just it is genuinely stupid, and I don't think it adds much actually to Star Trek. When we talked about um, like the Strange New Worlds episode, you know the musical one, uh, Subspace Rhapsody, that's a bit of a a bit of a novelty episode, but it adds a lot to the series because there's a lot of character development and background of the characters revealed in the episode. But this doesn't really give you anything. If you if this episode was lost and you didn't know it ever existed, it wouldn't really matter. It wouldn't really make an impact on Star Trek. Um, so it's a bit of an uneventful episode in that regard. And that's it. That's it from me. It's a bit naff, but so shit, it's good. Well, I hate it. <laughs> well, but there's two things that I will say about it. Uh, I think Shatner really acted his little ass off. He was really playing that straight, and I think probably the best acting in season three for him. I think I, I did think Shatner really played it really well. Don't you have a mate? Yeah. He was really going for it. Little kung fu. Oh, it was that. You know, you could tell he really wanted to put his effort into it, and I really liked. It. What I liked was cheesy. When he's doing the operation, it's just that like fade into the face. And then he got fades into the other face doing something else. And this is one scene where Kurt just turns around and goes, Blue Steel. And then it's, I just. <laughs> <laughs> With his sweaty eyebrows. Yeah, that's it. it um, but it was probably the most. I mean, even for me, I mean, I like my stupid episodes, but it was such a cringe episode. The one thing that was missing from it, when he was telling them, Oh, you figure it out, actually turned around. I was expecting him to go, 
Yeah, darling. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> that was what I was expecting. Um, the, the, yeah, I, I do think, even though the, that was the Reese Mastered episode, there was a lot of um, graphics. It, just, it was weird, like the phaser, and it all goes green instead of a yeah. beam and light. Um, one thing I, I did know is, I, I, why are they always cold? You know when they go on a planet, they always have to uh, heat a rock up and go, every planet <laughs> they go, it's cold as cold. <laughs> But yeah, I, I I haven't seen that probably since the 90s. And I, it's, it's one I will skip. I, I don't like season three at all. I think it's about two or three episodes I watch. Yeah. It's just too hard. I, I took me three, paused it three times. I have to have a break. So I'm just like, I can't sit still and watch it because it's really hard for me to watch. It's just yeah. so stupid. It's just, again, I, I like the silliness and, that, and I know it's tongue in cheek, but you think, really? He was scraping the bow for that one there. His brain has gone. gone. <laughs> but it's just, I mean, you're right, though. I, um, Dean Foss, K- Kelly, he, you could tell he was like, what am I saying? You could really tell yeah. in his face. Uh, the, the great sound effect, bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I read actually that um, Shatner and Spock, that's the spot, uh, Leonard Nimoy, and I, th- I think DeForest Kelly all have all said that this episode was an absolute nightmare. They hated doing it and they felt embarrassed doing it. I think Spock says he felt embarrassed, you know, just walking around with that weird I would love to head. see if it's a, probably isn't it, a blooper where oh, you can see really, what, yeah. what what is going on. I mean, <laughs> you do watch some of these things sometimes and you think, how are you keeping a straight face? Yeah. And that's got to be one of the episodes you think, what am I saying? Yeah. I could never be an actor, never. Sometimes you think there's a really there's a really solid core concept. It just wasn't yeah. executed well, but it wasn't here. The core no. concept is just is just ridiculous, yeah. um, and it does feel like you could probably tell this story in a better way. Just don't don't have Spock's brain going. Have him being I don't know, well, s- psychically linked to something. Well, no, well, even I think uh, Star Trek Voyager did, did a one with the Vadine kind of you know they took Neelix's lungs, yeah, and that was a much better concept. You know, yeah. the harvest in the this is just like why, yeah. And even the production value of the costumes, even for the, the big ogre men thing, the costumes are like, geez. I mean, I'm a big original series fan and I, I can forgive, they just seem like they just didn't give a shit. <laughs> <They didn't, laughs> did. You got about the sexism aspect, and I mean, I did notice a lot of the sexism in this episode, um, but I didn't even really think about the fact you've got this male overlord effectively, the controller. Yeah. I think it's just I didn't really. I didn't really recognise his gender, if, even though it's obvious. And and but the strange thing is, although you've got at the lowest of the low, you've got the men. I suppose you could say that at least that the women control the men rather than the other way around. But they are still very scantily clad. <laughs> I know that like the men are just wearing like look like cavemen, but the women. Me, men, me, men, yeah, you, women. <laughs> in cave. <laughs> oh, here we go. Marie's here as well. So yeah, the the men were all kind of like alpha male just yeah. animalistic and the women were all just dressed like, dressed like Barbarella with all the makeup on and everything and it it wasn't a believable world it's not like mm. some you can watch you get yeah and you're like yeah I can understand that out of this society existed whereas with this no there was just nothing believable about it at well, all it, it's like the episode where um you know where the village people rely on the the snake in the mountain mm. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah. Um, that, you, you, that you can you can believe and you can understand. Yeah. Okay, that's looked after them for such a long time. Blah yeah. blah blah. Whereas this sort of lacked any of that depth. Whenever I watch the original series, I always try and keep in my mind the fact that the time that this was broadcast. I mean, obviously, yeah, none yeah. of us were alive back then, so we don't really know exactly what the views were like. But we have a we have a relatively good idea. And to yeah. try and keep that in mind, but but like you said, it's almost like it was rushed. They never expected to do any more series, so they didn't keep hold of much in the way of props and stuff from from when it was originally done. And then all of a sudden, they're doing another series, and it's like shit. We've got to remake all of this stuff. And then obviously, Spock's ears come out slightly bigger, you know. And well, I don't know what Shat was doing with his wig, but <laughs> that, that, that's a whole other debate. But it, it was one of those things of we need to push something out quick. And I don't think it mattered. What it was. Yeah, I think when they saw the storyline and everything and, the, and the, the whole premise of the episode, I think they just could, because it was so ridiculous, they couldn't be asked to put the effort in. So then you get the silly sound because it just, of, yeah. of the buttons on the wrist, because it was there. 
<laughs> you know, it's something easy. They didn't think, oh, right, well, we've got to make this look really believable and sound really authentic. So let's, yeah. let's see what it was almost like. Oh, yeah, that's sound file number 56. Let's just use that. Yeah. You know, it was it, it was that sort of thing. And like when they put the, the whole brain thing on, it was convenient how there were no side effects to McCoy, yet you don't know what the biology or the genetic makeup of the, the women underground were. So it's funny how he got away scot free and that it gave him just enough time. Since when did Spock maintain the ability to reconnect a Vulcan's brain? Yeah. You know, that, that was really playing on the fact that he's super smart and smarter than everybody else. Yeah. It was, if there's something complicated to do, that, you know, we'll get Spock to do it. And this yeah. pushed that just a little bit too far for my liking. But much like you, Dad, when I'm re-watching it, this is one of those episodes that I will watch just for the hilarity, if nothing yeah. else. Clearly, when they've been out and they've visited all these planets uh, in that time frame, you know, there was, a, there was the great material shortage. You know, so naturally all the men got fully clothed and all the women got the scraps left over, which explains <laughs> why all the women on every single planet are wearing next to bugger all. But which is which is weird yeah. because it's a cold planet. Yeah. Oh look, something else that didn't make sense. Oh, bloody <laughs> hell. D, you all right, love? What are you done? You all right? Uh, I've had my transplant. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This isn't a hoax, is it? Because we're doing Spock's brain. Spock's brain. <laughs> I don't know. got rushed in on Tuesday morning, 5 a.m. Oh, brilliant stuff. So oh, what does that wow. mean, though? What? I mean, I say brilliant stuff. I'm assuming that's brilliant. Yeah, is that all good? Is that good news, then? Has everything gone fine? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, oh. oh they're back. Oh, oh, you're back. You disappeared there, but you're back now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, everything's gone to plan. Yeah. So far, so good. Oh, brilliant stuff. Fantastic, fantastic. That's brilliant. So you went in, what, Tuesday night, was it? Tuesday morning, first thing. Tuesday morning, first thing. So how does it work then? You just literally get a phone call, get in now. Yeah. I had yeah. to wake everybody up, kids in. He was like, oh, yeah. yeah, get back in bed. You're just dreaming. I'm like, get up now. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if you missed out in your transplant because he thought you were f***ing joking and rolled over and went back to sleep? Have you had an overnight backpack then for, like, ages that's left no. next to the door? No. 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 It was, it was just, here's the call. Yeah. It's upside down here. We'll see you in an hour. That's it. Can oh, I just wow. say, to, to everybody watching this, right, when you lot get colds and you don't feel well and you can't be bothered on a Thursday night, that is pure dedication. So did you watch it then, Dee? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I fell asleep at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're yeah, forgiven. So how long are you in hospital then for now? How does it work? <clears throat> as long as it takes. Yeah. At least a week. Oh, man. So how long does it take then? I know there's probably no simple answer, but I mean... Months. Months and months. Okay. Yeah. But once... probably I'll still be there July. Hey. But I'm assuming... Once, it, let's say everything's kicked in and everything's working really well, it, it'll be obviously, you know, life changing for you, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. No more dialysis Definitely. or anything like that. No. I just oh, got man. to watch my immunosuppressants. I've just got to stay away from people with colds and bruises oh, and viruses. God. You could get one of those old style space suits and just come in that and you'd be like one of the <laughs> yeah. first people on the moon. Go with a breen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing. That'd be a great one, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. So, I, 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 are all the family well excited then? How long was the operation? About five hours, four hours. Five hours. Yeah. I bet you fed up with me asking like... questions. <laughs> She's late yeah. At all, nobody's asked me nothing. <laughs> Absolutely knackered. I'm just giving you an interrogation. Have we gone mountain biking? What's the right tip? Have you ever walked out of a mall into a huge parking area and realized? You'd forgotten where you parked your car. Have you called a plumber to your home lately? Would you display this as a trophy? Do you have a pet? Do you have a sweet tooth? Can you remember the tallest man you've ever seen? That's... Isn't it? Well, I mean, it's everyone in who patches. It was his idea. Do this bloody show. Are you on strong um, painkillers now, then? Are you on no. a morphine driver or something? No. Two okay. paracetamol. Two oh, paracetamol. Oh, wow. Hey. You're kidding. Wow. See you, guys. Look after yourself. Uh, you can stay online and talk to him, yeah? 
<laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, that's pretty oh, good. Oh, that's really oh, good news. So that, that was better. That was better than the Spox brain. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At she least was, that was believable. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely. Yeah. She must have got fed up of waiting for McCoy to appear with his magic tablet. You know, like in Star Trek Four. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'll say is that acting was uh, worse than Shatner's. I think Shatner carried that. The um, Spock's brain. He's I think, Yeah, I, I, I just got a feeling that Dees didn't care enough. Um, so. <laughs> no. I wonder when she'll be back home then. I mean, I'm just, I don't think there's a set time, is there? Just the need to keep monitoring her. Yeah. Usually, it's months. months. Is it months? Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. You're, you're. I mean, you are the closest yeah. thing we've got to a doctor. Yeah, you're the closest <laughs> thing we've got. You are a medical professional. <laughs> so, Doctor Fitzgerald, what's the uh, what's the prognosis? Just you know. You've glanced her over. You haven't seen her medical records, but we'd like an in-depth uh, description of what happens next. <laughs> Normally, they just keep checking the creatine, which is in, which is what the, the hormones which is released yeah. from the kidneys to make sure that it's not rejected. But then every case is different. It all, all depends. I mean, she might she might be home in two weeks. Fingers crossed. Um, we'll we'll see her next week and get a progress update. Well, Dee, if you're watching this, and I think sometimes she does watch it, we hope you have a speedy recovery and we can't wait to see you in July. And, you know, every Thursday you can give us an update. Although we have got the WhatsApp group as well, so you can WhatsApp us at any point. But that's brilliant news. I think we're all, yeah. we're all pleased about that. It almost feels a bit churlish now, just going back and talking about Spock's brain. <laughs> know, like, oh. Of all the episodes that it could have been, it had to be a medical yeah. episode. I mean, we've had singing, we've had time travel, we've had westerns. No, D had to have her up when we were watching a medical yeah. episode. Just <laughs> And a shit one at yeah. that. In terms of Spock's brain, Penfold, do you feel that Shatner carried it then? Oh, massively. It was the best acting I've seen him ever do. You reckon it's the best Shatner episode? I mean, in terms of his yeah. acting? Yeah. I believed him. I, I believe he, he believed you that was happening. Do you think he felt a certain, because of the storyline and everything like that, he felt a certain level of responsibility to the fans to sort of make them... to the fans. I think the problem with Shatner the days from reading things, he, he liked to be the captain and he liked to be the leader and be the best of the crew. So I just feel that he just went for it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Is this someone new? We've not seen him for a few. Who are you? <laughs> uh, I'm Chris. This is my third, po third podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Chris. How are you, mate? You all right? Oh, well, good. Steve, you're actually moving. You're not frozen. Have you updated? Uh -huh. you look he was earlier. Yeah. And, uh, and whereas yeah. some people have sex toys in the bedroom, Steve's got a sword. I do, indeed, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I don't know why, but he's got oh, one. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Right. By the power of Grayskull. <laughs> it's not in brilliant <laughs> needs a bit of work done to it, but it's a proper fuck-off <laughs> sword. It yeah. is a fuck-off sword, yeah. Um, I'll tell you... Is that in case you can hear intruders on a night time? You keep a sword next to bed. <laughs> no, a bit liked it really rough, and this was the next logical <laughs> step. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, <no. laughs> Chris, just before you joined, uh, D and Jed joined us. Um, live you know, from hospital. Yeah, yeah, live from the hospital. And she's got a kidney on Tuesday morning, so, so there you go. D's literally... Had a new kidney and she joined us today. That's dedication. That is absolutely epic. That Her operation finished Tuesday night, and 36 hours later, she's here. What's everybody else's excuse? I mean, to be fair, she didn't add anything to the, the, the debate on the episode, so it was a bit of a, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> fair, part, uh, fair play to, to, to kind of be on and let us know how she's doing. That, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. Exactly. Patches. 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 Yeah, Patches. How are you doing, folks? Uh, not to add punches are going to fill you in i'm going to update you on where we're at okay so Please this do. is this is the order of events but not in order of importance or excitement number one i went through my thoughts on spock's brain then penfold right. started to give his thoughts on spock's brain and then we got joined by d and jed they called us from hospital d's had her um kidney transplant so there you go so oh. she joined us yeah so um 
punk for not getting there on time. I mean, we were all here, you know. We all uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 We were all here as a team, a strong team, a good team. Uh, it was late. You did miss it. Oh. How do you feel? Yeah, like, you the first words when she joined were, where's Patches? No, no. You know, the tear running down the eye. If only Patches was here, that would have made my day. You know, it would have really helped my recovery. That's why she's not on now, mate. She she went, you weren't here, so she buggered off. She was like, there's no point in me being here if Patches yeah. ain't here. That is a lot better than, oh, here's Patches, and now I'm signing off. So that's... <laughs> we was all okay. here, you know, and uh, we wish her well. <laughs> you know, we, we really was behind her. 100% strong team, you know, showing support. I'll send her a message, and, uh, and I'll say... <laughs> For the record, <laughs> right? Imagine, for the record, Chris rocked up about five minutes before you did. Okay. Oh, you. <laughs> 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 you fucking. Do you know what? And, like, there was there was genuine fucking. Do you know what? I'm like, I because I haven't checked the the WhatsApp all day, so I'm like, Chris, Steve. Uh, Penfold, everyone's kind of they, they're in the know, they know that she's in hospital they've turned up to, to give well wishes and I just roll in like a prick and he drove that home, do you know what Chris bravo, you got me man, you got me good yeah. and, um, I mean none of us uh, none of us knew mate none of us the, knew ahead of schedule that she was in there yeah, so yeah. we just well, found out it was a shock, the, it was a shock, what? for the benefit of the tape, I hope she's okay and I hope she's doing well so Penfold, I don't know if Penfold's been listening or not, but the last thing he was talking about was the fact that he feels that Shatner carried this episode. That Shatner, despite everything else, Shatner's acting was tip top. The best That's in it. season three, he reckons. Everything else, so that was awful, but Shatner was on form. That was it. I'm off, off now because I'm up for work. I'm up Okie dokie, Marie. But um, yeah, have a nice evening. See you later. No worries. Cheers, Marie. Bye, Marie. Bye. 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 So yeah, I'll I'll go next because um, I did watch the episode. I like the bit uh, where they took his brain out and when when and when they put it back. <laughs> Solid episode. I think we'll all agree. Solid. <laughs> Have you ever watched the comedy series Last Man on Earth? Uh, yes. Yes. There's that bit where um, yeah. he's trying to impress this woman and um, her favourite film is Shawshank Redemption. And he says, oh, yeah, yeah, that's my favourite film as well. And she knows he's just saying it to impress her. So he calls, she calls him out on it. She goes, all right, then what's your favourite bit? And he goes, all right, it's got to be when the Shawshank finally gets redeemed. <laughs> 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 and that's what that reminded me of. <laughs> have yeah. you ever seen it in the past, Chris? You must have seen it at some I'm, point. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've definitely seen it. So you've seen it on yeah. lists of worst episodes. Yeah, it, it's, it's bloody ridiculous. Let's be fair. Yeah. It um, is. But if you take it for what it is, I'm sure someone somewhere will enjoy it. <laughs> well, I, I put it in the category of so shit it's good. Some episodes are just shit, but this is so shit. I, I do enjoy it, and I, I do. I wouldn't miss it out. Well, I'm not going to repeat what I said it before, but on a rewatch, I wouldn't miss it out because it is an episode I do enjoy, even though I know it's shit. I kind of, I do laugh at it. And I'm not going to go through all the things I laughed at before because I've already said it. You have to rewatch it, Patches. Um, but it's just, it's just the delivery, delivery of all these lines that are meant to be serious. And you just can't help but piss yourself at the discomfort of DeForest Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, just the vacant look throughout the episode on the Leonard Nimoy's face. I won't say that you're not a Trekkie unless you like it because there's different types of Trekkies. Apart from the gaffes and, and some of the stuff like the disappearing mountains, did anyone see that? Kirk's on the bridge and Chekhov gets something to do. Do you know what I mean? And it, it, he's, he's strutting around the bridge and he's like, we'll do this, we'll try. What, show me the planets. What, what are our options here? And they go into the situation where they, they've got an M-class planet, it's glaciated. So it, it gives you this wide shot of them beaming onto this planet with these huge mountains, snow-capped mountains in the background, this massive vista, which is gorgeous. Then it cuts to the close-up, and we're back to styrofoam, and that's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, I know that the actors do kind of struggle with techno babble, And how are they to know what is good techno babble and shocking techno babble? Do you know what I mean? How are yeah. they to know what we're going to go? Well, that's just stupid because they're probably reading this going, this mm. is, look, man, there's a steady paycheck in it. I'm just going to read this shit. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to deliver this. And you can tell that DeForest Kelly is, 
is really struggling <laughs> with this shit. And he's like, and he's trying to inject drama into it. And yeah. and his eyebrow, his his eyebrows doing overtime yeah. <laughs> for the whole episode. And it's just that that whole kind of. Especially when he's doing the operation. It's like... Yeah, and now Spock's eyebrow does a thing, and Spock's eyebrow it kind of got a break this episode. So I think DeForest thought, you know what? You haven't got the monopoly on the eyebrow thing. I'm going to do the eyebrow thing. And it is... The, some of the dialogue, you can tell they're struggling with it. And how they delivered it with a straight face is beyond me. How they actually got through this episode without falling around laughing. And the, the the gnome kind of guys that you've got, the bouncers on this planet. And it's not quite explained. <laughs> the gnome hearts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, not ex- it's not really explained in any detail why you've got these cavemen running around up top. And it's not that it, you just kind of assume that you know what's going on. But yeah. they do have some bouncers down there dressed up like made Marion's Merry Men almost. They yeah. look like they've just finished doing a scene for uh, like a Robin Hood type thing. And they've gone, look, we need to cut the bounces. Before lunch, can you just come in here? What do you want yeah. to do? Just, just, just stand, stand there and look guard. <laughs> and, um, and they did. And they stood there with his stuff on. And they just stood there like that. And Kirk, I think, there's, when, they, when he lays into him and the fight scene erupts, I just saw, I saw Spock. Just, he just looked so dejected. And unhappy, sat at the table with everyone's doing the double kicks and the fly kicks, and he's just sat there like that. I pissed myself laughing. <laughs> I just couldn't stop laughing. It must have been a budget thing. Like, what, what are we going to do? The brain scene. How are we going to put his brain back in? And they've got this bit of MDF with a cutout, <laughs> and they stick the top of Spock's head in it. And they go, right, this is acting, guys. Okay, so just act. Yeah, you pull out your best stuff and make this look like you give a shit. When they're doing the situation, putting his brain in again, it's it's and I think um, Scotty was overacting. Who built the machines? He looked Scotty. like he was on meth. Yeah, he was just oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I... His eyes were out on stalks all the time. Like what's going on? <laughs> and, well, I and... I was in, in just mentioned Scotty. I mentioned in my comments that Shatner's hair looks really shit in this episode. His wig just looks really ridiculous um it's like Wait. greasy and <laughs> no, really but <laughs> but scotty has got great looking hair in this episode he's got like he's rocking this new kind of like brushed back look who built the machines uh, yeah. and it it looked it did it looked so, a lot better who built the machines scotty to me looks like I, I grew up on a lot of stories about you know the hard men in govern and yeah and glasgow and they were teddy boys back then do you know what i mean and it was a lot of the long crombie coats that slick back hair and that look and that's just kind of what he reminded me of and we were talking about still game during the week he looks like a 1950s 1960s teddy boy hard man that yeah. had one too many of them f-ing tablets and he's just what's going on what do you mean where's his brain <laughs> And he's he's over he's just overdoing it. The worst bit was when Spock sits up with his and let's just, I mean they've had to put his brain back in. He, there's not a hair out of place. There's no cut. There's no scar. There's no nothing. He didn't even give him a couple of paracetamol. He just sat up and went. <laughs> well. <laughs> and they're all like, yeah, that was funny. and he's. His hair's immaculate, everything's immaculate. And he's like, that's never been done before. I'm glad it was a success. <laughs> Congratulations, Doctor. And thank you. Yeah, you connected my mouth. And I was like, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, actually when this when this start like um, on his brain it's always they make it sound so simple like in your brain you've got little things that things connect into and there's about 10 of them because it's like right that's your index finger that's your <laughs> little finger it's just literally it's like that it was just ridiculous right forefinger correct yeah, uh, and the whole vocal cord thing. I was, li- I was laughing out loud watching this. Or if you can get my vocal cords first, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just get the, I'll just plug this lead into your vocal cord socket. Boom, there we go. That's that done. It was yeah. just. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting him not to be able to walk right. His hands with his feet, or you know, yeah. something, something like weird. Like, oh, you've done it wrong, you fucking idiot. But no, there was nothing like that at all. 
It was, yeah, and I was, I was expecting because the episode was that bad. I was expecting yeah. him to go for start speaking backwards or something, <laughs> but no, there was nothing <laughs> like that. He sat up with perfect hair, yeah. no scars, nothing, and went, yeah. <laughs> and just yeah just started yeah. they all started laughing like oh spock you did it again <laughs> he, didn't, exactly. he didn't even exactly. he didn't even like stand up and just go like oh you know like, i'm a bit woozy there was not, nothing is this literally he was like oh there we go yeah anyone Got my brain anyone, back yeah totally anyone had gone Fuck. but no he didn't do that. He didn't st- start and go, do you know what, Doc? That's really good work, man. That's like, you know. <laughs> yeah. you know I, or maybe his hairline had been a bit too far down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, McCoy, you know, can, can we just put it back a bit or something? <laughs> no, nothing. It was just perfect. I first watched this when I was a kid. And a lot of the stuff I watched when I was a kid from Captain Scarlet and, um, the, and, and the Mr. Ons and all, it was all shit. And to be honest, like the A-Team as well. That's literally the same story every single episode. And that went on for years. And they're all shit. So I was used to buying in as a kid to shit like this. But looking back on it, I don't actually think I've wasted my life watching this for another 45 minutes. I pissed myself. I really, really did. And the fact that it's trying to take itself so seriously. And the actors are desperately, desperately trying to pump the energy into this episode. (laughs) And and give yeah. it that drama, and, and and act like they know what they're talking about, and it's not ridiculous. Because I mean, we're in a season three now, so they've they've said a whole lot of things that to them they must have gone, this is fucking ridiculous. But when it's been broadcast, they're like, do you know what? Maybe they like it. Maybe we'll just give yeah. them more. So I I just hope that maybe DeForest Kelly or or any of them didn't think that. Oh, they're going to soak this up. This is going to go down in history. This is the one, boys. This is the one we really nailed at this time. We've yeah. covered it all, and we ended it on a laugh. They'll they'll go for it in a big way. <laughs> you know, I, I I did. I loved it. I loved the yogurt pot things on the on the on their belts on their bellies with the button that didn't seem to do oh, anything. Cringe, cringe. Oh, yeah, that was. Oh, it was. Do you know what? That's what we used to do when we were kids. We used to run around and like a stick was a toy when you were playing in the woods for a, for a good hour. A yogurt pot or a, uh, a fairy <laughs> liquid bottle or something like that. Yeah. So that's for a kid to buy into that. Like, oh, it's just make believe. It was kind of buying in, but not buying in at the same time. But the effects were shit. They really were. And all of these women in the 60s bouffants running around for no reason, talking like babies. But, you know, I don't understand anything. One minute she's on the ship. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? She's on the ship. She's beamed onto the ship. And she does this thing where she touches Spock's. All right, this is just straight to him. This is the brain I'll I'll be having. And the next time you see her, she's like, I don't know words. I don't know anything. I don't understand. You can go now. And I love that. You can just f*** off. And Kirk's like, "Mm, no, (laughs) (laughs) we're not going. We've, we've come yeah. from my mate's brain. Doesn't he oh, say, man. doesn't he say, oh no, we'll stay and we'll learn more about you. Something like that. Yeah, because he's like, we're dealing with kids here. No, we'll stay here and learn about you. And even, yeah. and do you know what? The thing with the remote control Spock as well. Oh. <laughs> and he didn't walk like Frankenstein. You expected him to walk like Frankenstein. He didn't. He just kind of walked along normally. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. That was top notch. Top notch shite. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I uh, could watch that again this weekend. Honestly, I could. I could watch that every uh, week yeah. and still laugh at it. Honestly, Chris, it's well worth another watch. I, I, think, I think I will do. I mean, it's, it's been a while, so I think I'm going to have to. Penfold disagrees because Penfold really dislikes this episode. But yeah, I, honestly, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> But I was saying at the beginning, it, you need to think about the context of this season because seasons one and two have been and gone, right? They weren't very popular and Star Trek was cancelled. It's gone. No more Star Trek. You've got the letter writing campaign. It comes back. Paramount, clearly, they cancelled it anyway. So they weren't bothered about it. They're like, F- this, Star Trek. We don't want it. From season three, you do not get the impression that Paramount or CBS or whoever it is thought, right, it's back now. We're going to make sure this is done really. We're going to have top-notch writing, top-notch effects. No, they wanted to kill it, I think. They really wanted to bury it. And I think, you know, Spock's brain um, is the first nail in the coffin, really. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was bad. Probably it's, Paramount um, or CBS had come up with it. <laughs> this is probably, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how this got past the the, the layers of quality checking and writing and you know like the sanity check yeah. it, i don't know how gene rodenberry went for it I well the, the actors didn't like it the actors complained about it um because because i was reading about it um just after i watched it at the weekend shatner said several times that he thinks it's you know like the worst episode of star trek leonard nimoy said he was embarrassed doing it he felt the embarrassing entire episode yeah he, he thought it was humiliating deforest kelly didn't like it nobody liked it nobody liked this episode we, we've never been back to this planet ever since yeah uh, we don't know how they're getting on we don't know what you know what these women are like i thought shatner would have gone do you know what i know where there's a dead cert for this weekend and these women... <laughs> <laughs> all we've got to do is take them a, a a brain and i i really struggled with this one and star trek's famous for it gene rodenberry was big on it i struggled to find the point i didn't see the moral of the story i didn't see the message do you no. know what i mean i i just agree, agree. i think it was it was really badly done the message behind this and it feels like they tried to shoe on it into the towards the end again i, I mentioned it in my kind well, of like talk in your in your opinion at the end uh Kirk says to like that that woman because uh, she's like oh you can't take the control away we can't you know we can't do anything without him and he kind of gives her this little speech where he says he basically says you've got men up there and you're torturing them you know so they'll do your bidding you need to it, that's no way to get it basically it says to him you all need to get on together as a society rather than fractured and it felt like that was meant to be the message but it was it was it wasn't put across in a particularly great way it was and it was, well, thrown, well, in. I, it was thrown in it was just thrown in that. and do you know what you say shatner saved the episode when they were starting to get tortured with this thing and they're all rolling around the deck and really get <laughs> i was like i believed him they... i believed every moment oh it was <laughs> look i mean dan's <laughs> losing it now dan's losing it now he's just like <laughs> he's reaching he's reaching for that thing he's like ah yeah. he meant it he really meant it he, do you know what? He rolls like he speaks. He rolls a bit, stops, pauses, rolls a bit more, pauses. I mean, it's, it's like he's, it's, it's like the marks where it's like he's waiting for the laugh. You know, William, Bill, it's enough. I said cut. All right. And he's like, oh, oh, okay. As bad as it is, this kind of episode is that memorable, that funny, that shocking, and that worthy of talking about, actually, that it's one of the things that created the fandom, the cult following. After the end of the third season and Star Trek was no more, this is probably one of the things that got the geeks together. And mm. and and they like we're doing, how are we going to defend this? How, how are we going to... How, how can we possibly say yeah. that this is worthy of, of broadcast? And I suppose if you've got someone that's struggling to get into Star Trek or struggling with the original series, a, a, a few tins of Guinness... And some nachos on the table and go, look, get, watch this. Just, <laughs> get some, no get some way, box brain. No. Yeah, okay. what, watch this. And if they if they don't laugh, then you've lost them. The episode started off all right. And they changed. And, and in fact, for the first like few minutes, there's no suggestion of what's going on at all. Yeah, ev- everyone's just getting on with it, doing yeah. their thing. And, and Kirk's walking around, you know, looking serious. But no one says anything, actually. As a, as a, do you know what? You say no one says anything. That's a really good point because when that woman appears on the bridge, right? Instead of them being like, "Oh shit, what's going on?" phases out or whatever. It's just like, "Hello, what are you doing here?" <laughs> it's just yeah. like it's just like really a kind of you know. It's like it's no big deal it, because she's an attractive yeah. woman. It's like, "Oh hello." Whereas um, in, yeah, in, in any other season, yeah, Wolf would have been straight <laughs> over the thing. <laughs> <have> that, <laughs> yeah. he'd have jumped over the bridge, over the captain, and he'd have been going straight into it. He should have leaned. I told you my quarters, not the bridge, not one yeah. of work. You know, something like that. But... All right, Jed. Hello. Hey, Jed. Hello. Kick me out. They kicked you out. The lads filled me in on what's happening. How's she getting on? Uh, she's feeling like shit, to tell you the truth. Yeah. She wants to come home. She said she wanted to rejoin. There we go. Oh, there we go. All I've got is my face. All right. Yeah. Now I can't see it. I can't see your face. Can you hear you? Uh, yeah, I can't see it. I can't see anything. Yeah, D, I was just telling Patches, you know, how touching it was to see you earlier, you know, the <laughs> of it, and uh, how, how lovely it was. 
you're looking a bit you're looking a bit cheerier now, D. Is that because you've got some meds or is it because Jed's gone? <laughs> I'm joking, Jed. I'm joking, Jed. I love Jed. It makes me laugh. Don't make D laugh. Yeah, he's don't in pain. Really, does the heart good, uh, D, to see that you're doing okay? Yeah. Um, and we hope you obviously you go from strength to strength and we can't wait to see you at DST. Do you know what? I'm going to have to say it. Doctor gave me a pill and I grew a new kidney. <laughs> <laughs> Happy new kidney. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, oh damn <laughs> Uh, if, it need, if it needs waking up, D, just give it one of these. Just, you know, just give it a quick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, Patches, you're the bastard because that episode was a slog. No, I don't mind it. I've seen it before, but I was laughing because I stuck it on. The kids were yeah. with me. Then I looked round, they got up and walked off. <laughs> and I'm, sat here, I'm sat here going right so all the women live underground all with everything brilliant and all men are cavemen on the top <laughs> bagging the, the knuckles around the surface right so basically you've got Clarks and Hammond and May ragging it around on an Argo <laughs> <laughs> but for a change this, this episode was sexist in the other hand over <laughs> but I did think that's what he said. How can any of these lot be engineers? Yeah. Is, uh, there we go. There's the old there's the old 60s sexism coming out again. What was going on with Scotty's bouffant? Yeah, his hair, uh, yes. New hairdo. I think it, it looked was, better. It was square. <laughs> it was borderline Max Edroof. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. The, the hair and makeup department was on vacation this week, man. Along with the writing team. Do you want a couple of oh my <laughs> moments? Go for it. Well, I've only got two that I think are worthy of oh my moments. Number one is, you know the controller when you see it? It's that black box yeah. with all the stuff coming out of it. That is, you know Nomad from the Changeling? That's, yeah. It's, it's Nomad with a different with a different song. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Oh, oh my. Oh my. Oh and my. The second oh my I've got is um, this is the only episode from the original series where the name of a regular cast member is in the title of the episode. Oh my! Spock's brain. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, just in case you couldn't yeah. figure it out, Spock was the name of the uh, regular cast member there. Who? Well, that was a no-brainer. Um, <laughs> hey. As much as we like, as much as we like seeing you, D. If you're trying not to laugh, this is probably the worst place <laughs> you can be right now. It really is. <laughs> hey, D, D, that, that gown you're wearing, is that one of those fetching numbers where you can see your ass and everything? If it's not too much trouble, just get up and give us a twirl, will you? <laughs> <laughs> and I know we're all taking the piss, but we're only doing it, you know, to keep your spirits up. You're is that what you do it to me every week? <laughs> <laughs> just to... A lot of people will go, you're in a Star Trek, and th this is what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're a Trekkie. Yeah, and um, I watched that once, and it was about this fucking thing with this brain and the incoherent, poorly acted shit. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm into, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>